Hey, what's better than the real world? The really real world. We're talking all about mixed reality tonight on The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest, or in this case, two, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. I reject your mixed reality and substitute my own. Ah, all right. And our guests this week are Brad Koch. Go, Go ahead, ahead and plug me in the Matrix and leave me alone. Nice. <laughs> and Xavier Bates. Hello. I have nothing fun uh, to say. Okay, so Brad Koch is the president of the Wyoming Gaming Library, a 501c3 who looks to di- who, uh, dive, who looks to drive video and board games to schools and hospitals in the Wyoming Colo- and Colorado area. Xavier Bates is the VP of the Wyoming Gaming Library and works as a designer for RPG and tabletop material. He also works with several independent game developers and authors in Wyoming, Colorado, and Arizona. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get really gonna get really real, or actually, we're gonna get as far away from really real as possible. Um, so, so tonight, we're gonna be talking about virtual reality and augmented reality, otherwise known as mixed reality. It's kind of like mixed martial arts, only not nearly as cool. Um, so <laughs> no, it's cool. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now I, I kid. Mixed martial arts. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. you could do that. You could totally do that. Now we're getting a Ready Player One. Right now, <laughs> right, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, the the thing about all this mixed reality stuff, um, it's here, right? It's it's not like something of the future. It's not, uh, it's not something that that is coming down the road. It's here, right now. It's already being used. Uh, it's just, it's not in everybody's. It's not on everybody's face yet. Uh, Google Glass took a stab at it. Uh, there were some issues with that, but you know they'll get there. Hololens is working on it. Um, you know it's going to be. It, I personally think it's going to be as ubiquitous and uh, society changing as smartphones have been. Uh, mm-hmm. You know people will not want to be without theirs once they get used to it. It'll be that thing that, oh my God, it's not working. What do I do? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, oh shit, I left my glasses at home. I can't get have where either, I'm going. Have either of you, got, any, have you guys read uh, Daniel Suarez's uh, books? Um, what is it? Damon or something incorporated and TM. Um, I'm forgetting the, the exact names, but basically in his world, uh, everyone is like that is everyone's world. Like you, you have sort of your glasses, and like if, uh, and like uh, we were talking about with Brad earlier with Google Glass, um, you know everything is assisted. So you're looking at someone, and it, 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 everyone has their own tag, and it gives their information, and it's like you know it's almost like having that assistant. Like oh, you remember Pete? You know you went to high school with him. Oh yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> oh man, that would be nice. I There's know. There's some fun concept yeah. videos of people doing that with CG on YouTube. And it's right. very interesting to see how it would work. Freedom. Yeah. It was Freedom TM and then something yes. else. Freedom yeah, yeah I, I saw a video. There was a video with a woman walking. She's like walking through the through the grocery store and yeah. like her thing gets hacked. And yeah, but hold on. I, I am remiss. I have forgotten to do something. Hold on, everybody. We got to uh, put the brakes on this. We'll come back oh, to it. No. There's, I, know I did. I forgot something. Uh, and my wife reminded me of it. Uh, hey, Mike, what's today? What's important about today? Today is 9 10 2018. Oh. No, no, what is today? Nine, today's Monday. And it's a holiday. It's Oh, it's is your it the people's <laughs> It's, it's your Rosh people's Rosh holiday. Shana? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm a bunch of I'm with a bunch of heathen atheists. I don't know what people you <laughs> No, look. Hey. Hey, to all our Jewish fans and, and watchers out there, happy Rosh Hashanah, happy New Year to you all. Uh, my wife is Jewish and and she <laughs> <laughs> she told me she's like she's like you better say happy new year to everybody and i was like okay i will and then i completely <laughs> forgot like like oh yeah right out my head and she mentioned so you it need in the one of those virtual reality assistants that'll remind that's, you that's that's exactly. what i need yeah it'd be like popping up you know like a chala a chala a little thing of honey and for the sweet new year. anyway uh, so anyway happy holiday to, to all my peeps anyway all right so go ahead back back to <laughs> Back to mixed wow. reality. Back to life. All right. Back to reality. <laughs> so what? Oh, back to alternate reality. Anyway, all right. Um. So augmented. Augmented. Yeah. So, 
so Mike, what was the the books you were talking about? So they they is this a, like novels? Are these novels that they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. talk I, about I how it would integrate? Xavier, if you were familiar with them too, like it's a they're sort of police procedurals. He's solving a murder yeah. of this of a really big, uh, a famous type person um who who was murdered and they're trying to figure it out and there was you know hacking and there was a uh the other one is damon D damon or demon something and it, it all had to do with um a computer program that was introduced into this system and it was actually running subroutines at such an ai like uh level that you had to start questioning like is is our world going to become that in, in essence too so you you're gonna may end up having this virtual reality that if you think about it mixed with ai which is a whole other we haven't even touched on the virtual reality so let's just put that on on hold for a minute but they i i highly recommend the daniel suarez books there they was a really good uh two book series so Excellent. so what what did um so you guys you you know you're, you're talking about doing virtual reality uh as a uh a tool to, to use in hospitals and stuff and we'll get to that but but what got you into that what what made you decide that you wanted to uh, go down that road because I mean that's that's pretty high-tech stuff are you are you working with that currently uh, a little bit we're looking into it really what it came down to was finding a way to use games to give back and then we start figuring out how because mm. short of bringing in like Mario Kart for everybody to play that was really cool but then we started meeting with some people down in the Denver area and there's actually somebody who's designing virtual reality for hospitals to manage heroin addiction. So it would actually tie in. So it noticed when like your blood pressure would spike, you'd be on a safari and it would notice when something would happen, like zebras would run by and it would distract you. And that was when we're like, okay, virtual reality, augmented reality are tools that you, when they get it right, will have a zero level entry barrier setting up me, but I can look at something. And I can go, look, there's a zebra. Oh, I see it. That's cool. I don't have to have a controller. I don't have to know how to use two analog sticks, anything like that. Hmm. Neat. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Very I, cool. I, I'm familiar with them using augmented reality in the psych uh, in the like the psychiatric field where they're starting to use it more for uh, what's called like exposure therapy. So people exactly, who are even yeah. scared of spiders or scared of uh, just being around people. So to to just uh, oh, the spiders. Well, okay. Well, yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Okay. All right. Brad needs some uh, exposure therapy. So, so, so yeah. in other words, yeah. they would look down and, and a spider would be like crawling up their arm in, in the, in the virtual reality well, to help it, it, or augment reality to help yeah. them not actually put a spider on them, but help right, them right. acclimate yeah. to the. Okay. Yes, Pete. There's not, a... You wouldn't be like, I don't think you would be the one to program that because you would be having them crawl all over them in the first. Ah! Ah! <laughs> You're getting better. Look, I'm helping. <laughs> There's a game on the Oculus store that's called Face Your Fears and you can set how much or how afraid you are of something and it'll tune it to your fear and you, there's i think a dozen or two dozen fears to pick from on the app to play through as exposure therapy right uh -huh. i'm well i'm terrified of porn i can say that right now <laughs> horrified of it <laughs> yeah. oh. how, come, how come your therapy sessions taken seven years so far <laughs> hey i'm a sick man so i'm I going guess. deep i'm going deep in this <laughs> Funny. Oh. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so, so so they're actually using this stuff now. I mean, it's not like, again, this is not something they're developing. It's being used in these therapies uh, as we speak. Now, Mike, is this virtual or is it augmented or is it both or what? Uh, from what I understand, they've been using virtual, but I imagine that you could also do the augmented. But I would I would think that that would be in later sessions because you 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 then are going to start seeing your hand yeah. and a spider crawling on your hand and right. While that still is a safe, as long as you're able to maintain a, a sense of where and how you are, right? Um, that's still a, a, a next level. So hey, you know, uh, be funny. Yeah. You like slip in a real spider and don't tell them. Like, yeah, wouldn't yeah, that be that'd hilarious? Be that'd be good. Oh man, <laughs> Doctor Bryant, paging Doctor <laughs> Bryant. No, if somebody did that, no, because that that's my fear. If somebody did that to me, I'd probably shit my pants right then and there. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so, so, Mike, you said you were looking at something about haptic gloves, okay? And like so, what air uh, variable air actuators? Well, I'll I'll, I'll ask uh, Brad Xavier. Hey, did you okay. guys uh, and and anyone in the chat room? I suggest this if you have it. Um, checked out uh, the Smarter Everyday series. Uh, Destin 
went to a company that has one of the most advanced uh, haptic feedback gloves. And it is amazing. Um, you know, you, you were able to see the split screen to see him and, you know, how he's, you know, he's got his bucket on his face and he's got this, you know, the, the glove on. And it actually, the glove has these, uh, re, you know, reversed uh, pull um, tra- uh, tension pullers uh-huh. so that when he's grabbing something, it, it actually gives resistance to it. Uh-huh. Um, and it also has uh, over 120 different sensors on the palm and the fingers so that, you know, you, you saw him putting his hand in and it was like raining on it and he could feel the individual drops. He felt a little fox jump up on his hand to see oh. this and see his response to it. And there was a spider that crawled up on his, on his oh. head. But they asked him if he felt safe. But, but uh, he, and, and then there was confetti falling and they, and at, at the end, and he said, this is the lightest I've seen. And it is uh, due to what they called continuously variable air uh, actuators. So there's just like little bits of little pockets of air that is being pumped in wherever you're feeling, you know, the, 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 the pressure. And it's just, can you imagine what has to go into, and he, there's a second video that I watched in where they're discussing what goes into the calculations um, on how to get uh, the hardware and the processors into the machine and to time everything accurately so that your brain, which has its own timing between the same time it takes for a sensation to get from your fingertip to your brain um, and then the outside world to, to mimic that, it's, it's amazing that we're able to do that with such accuracy. And I, I highly recommend that because it's, it's like the second generation of, of this uh, uh, what we call it, virtual reality and augmented reality because, you know, our vision, yeah, that's most important, but what's after that touch? And um, it's doing that. The other thing real quick is the um, omnidirectional treadmill. He went and there's another video. I've done that. that. Yeah. I I was on it at uh, DreamHack. Okay. So I don't, now I don't know which ones you did or the company because the the place that he went there were like, I would say it's 90% baked. And um, it's like, you know, it, walking forward, there was only a slight problem with like doing very quick turnarounds and things like that. But it's like almost there to where you can mm-hmm. pretty much walk in place and walk and go anywhere you need to go. And to that, it's just we're almost there. And, and this is all technology that's happening today. This isn't like five, ten years. It's only going to be better in five to ten years. Well, to that right. point, you actually bring that up. I did my omnidirectional with haptic feedback about five years ago and five years ago I basically had a set of goggles it was not motion sensor it was a locked fixed display I was an omnidirectional I had an old school laser tag gun with a button on it and I had a vest on and the only thing I had for haptic feedback was when I got shot playing an old counter-strike game it felt like somebody hit me in the chest with a subwoofer that was it there was no sensitive there was no nothing else I could move, but my point of view wouldn't react but in any way, shape, or form. Right. It was basically a right stick. And five years from now, we're talking about being able to feel rain. So yeah. in five years from now. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's the uh, – what is that called? The, uh, the, the – Logarithmic. Well, yeah. no, the law of, uh, oh, of um, technology. Exponential, technology. Exponential, exponential yeah. growth. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it. Every little like offshoot of technology, I think, has its own version of that. And it, it, someone in the chat room will say, "Hey, Paul, Paul Noons, what is that it, law?" He'll tell us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make us feel stupid, Paul. You're good at yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> he's got the Google at his hands anyway. So, um, so the I, you know the complexity of of putting all this stuff together, um, you know, and and, and coordinating all this stuff, still. Not as hard as programming a VCR from the old school days. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, hashtag truth. <laughs> okay, so Xavier, a VCR I, was before. Right? The, there we go, Xavier. Right, right. Xavier's the young buck in the in the bunch. Yeah, yeah. This was before they yeah. had. Uh, this is before they had H. You know, HD DVDs. Right. This Believe is, me, uh, with my father, I I know all the old tech with oh, my father. Okay, all right, all right. All right. good right, man, right. good man. Right. That's funny. Uh, I, I, I still spit that stuff out, and I'm still like, there are times, I, every once in a while I'll be at work, and I'll say something like that, and one of the, the interns or whatever look at me, like with this glassy, like doe-eyed look, like, <laughs> I'm like, and I look at him and go, you don't know what I'm talking about, right? Right, yeah, that makes sense, sorry. Back in my day! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, right. I'm there. Get off the lawn! Right, right. So, 
so you know, um, what other things, you guys? What do you what do you think? Other things from medical field. I mean, I honest, you know, when I think about um, using mixed reality in the medical field, of course, virtual reality can can be used for for uh, you know training people how to how to do uh, medical fields and stuff, but like. I, I like – I'm a big fan of augmented reality. I don't know why, but I'm just I, – I love augmented reality so much. I think because virtual reality makes me sick when I try and use it. But augmented reality is really slick and, you know, it, it can do overlays and stuff. So I'm just imagining, you know, you've you got uh, a bunch of students standing around a, a cadaver and they're getting ready to, you know, do a, a, um, you know, an autopsy, te teach them how to do an autopsy. And, you know, the augmented reality pops up and it shows where everything is before they even cut this person open or whatever, you know, or, or let's say a surgeon is working on somebody and um, they're like, overlay that x-ray again. I need to see, you know, I'm cutting here and I want to see where that thing was in relation to the body, like on the body, you know, or the MRI, or as, you know, I'm a few inches deep, take the MRI down that level. Oh, it should be over here. Oh, yep, there it is. You know, I'm just thinking stuff like that is it, and that's not crazy that's i think that's very realistic oh yeah that's in practice today how they're using virtual reality and augmented reality to train doctors and people learning about biology i think the big key awesome. is that augmented reality is the way we're going to end up because back in the 80s and 90s you talked about virtual reality or holograms we had our star trek holodex if you mm -hmm. would but augmented reality doesn't remove reality it has that blend. When you're in virtual reality and you're doing haptic feedback or whatever, you talked about the phobias, there's that disconnect. Augmented reality still keeps you rooted in reality. So I think ultimately once the entry-level barrier, you talked about everybody having smartphones. My dad finally got a smartphone this year. But <laughs> right. now that he has a smartphone, he's all excited. To, but when we get to the point where my dad has augmented reality, that's when it's going to be mainstream and the barrier level is going to be enough that it's going to be everywhere and everywhere. But yeah. it doesn't allow you to leave reality completely. Augmented reality for day-to-day -day life is going to be the future where virtual reality is going to be more for gaming and entertainment and movie because you want to be immersed in your entertainment. But when you're at work or you're doing a surgery or you're working on your car, you need to be present in the real world. Well, and virtual reality too could be used in the medical field with how they use it to treat burn victims now. There's a game that has been designed as a snowball fight, and burn victims are doing the changing of bandages. The game actually reduces their pain by more than the medication. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, well, the mind, hey, the mind is a powerful thing. Oh, oh yeah. and by the way, Moore's Law. Thank you, Paul. Moore's Law. Yeah. Moore's <laughs> law. <laughs> right, right. So, so, yeah, so, so the burn victims, they, so they wear this, and in it, they're having a snowball fight. So they, is it that they're distracted? Is it that it's cold to them? It's like, because it has the disconnect and their brain is thinking it's cold. So while they're changing in bandages, which is usually extremely painful, they don't feel it as much, even without the medication. Oh, man. Woo. Hey, Mike. I need one of those when I go to my mother-in-law's. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I mean, dude. I feel you, man. I feel you. I, when I go to... I'm not even going to get into it because <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind well, having one myself. All right, all right. Hey, have you guys seen the um, the experiments they've done where if you you put your arm and it, you put a fake arm right next to it, you hide With your arm hammer? like in a box. Yeah. And so what what you've done is Pete. I don't know if you've seen this, but you put your arm in inside oh, yeah. of a box, and then outside of the box you see a fake arm, and then someone starts tickling your arm or tickle, but also tickling the fake arm at the same time. And you start to associate and feel like that's your arm. And all of these things, like the experiments and the uh, studies that they're doing with all of this, um, even though it's fun to see someone freak out when someone then hits that fake hand with a hammer, ah! because it's, right. it's such a visceral response. But all these things are going to come together. And it was interesting that, uh, to hear uh, Brad say something that um, he was like, you know, well, why – it makes me think uh, – for a while, I was like all about virtual reality and thinking, yeah. I want to make like the virtual world seem as real as the real world. But why would you do that when you can just augment the things that are in the real world with what you need to be virtual, but you don't have to rebuild the real world virtually if it's still right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's until we get to a matrix where we can actually associate the electrical signals with our brain. So we're literally feeling, touching, smelling, and our brain thinks we're, we're there, then the virtual reality would be enough that you could put me in a closet with a catheter and a tube of baby food and leave me alone. 
and it Vaseline. Could just be a battery. Right. <laughs> Vaseline. Hey. What? what? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I was so I'm reading. I was reading some. Um, reading some articles on, uh, you know, how the, well, actually it was a book. It was a book on how the brain works. I was talking about pl plasticity of the brain where they mm -hmm. had, they had put um, sensors on a person's back, right? And through training and sensory, um, sensory, uh, I, wanna, pff, I don't know, sensory, like touching it and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. They, the person was actually able to see behind him with this, this thing. Um, it had to do. He couldn't, couldn't like couldn't like really see, but like if air blew or something, it, they he could sense stuff behind him. Then they also uh, put a third arm on a. I think it was on a monkey. Might have been on a person, but they attached like a like a like a robotic arm to the person, and it wasn't like attached. It like sewed it into their body. But they created. Um, they had some feedback for it, and the person actually could control all three arms after some time of training. Huh. So the brain can learn to do these things and can then make things real to itself. We oh, it's like phantom pain and amputated limbs. Yeah. Yep. So it, it's it's pretty cool. I mean the brain is an amazing it's it's the what they call the three what the three pound gym, right? It's uh, oh, yeah. amazing what it can do. Um so so let's uh well, we could talk about this all night. So let's let's, <laughs> let's let's move on so we can hit the things we need to hit. Um so pediatric apartment, uh, so kids can can uh, uh, kids with cancer can escape reality. Tell me about how this came about. How did you and and what have you guys done so far towards this end? So that's kind of what we tell the average person, and we always right. get the oh response. But right. uh, that was how we could figure out how to use games to help. We created the Wyoming Gaming Library, um, who brings no cost games to the front range. That's Wyoming, Colorado, for those of you not here. And uh, we want to build four high-end virtual reality machines with PlayStations and Xboxes as well that we can roll anywhere, whether that be a school, uh, another charity event to entertain the kids. But I had this vision of pediatric department, kids with cancer, and instead of bringing in, oh, here's an N64, we, we can bring, bring in virtual reality so you can literally escape the dreadness of your own reality and get away. Hmm. Right. Oh, How that's the reception cool. been for that? Uh, we're, we actually launched as a 501c3 in March. So we are still in the, fir the, the first stages of getting everything, but the reception's been huge. The community has rallied behind us. Great. We've had interest from across the country. Uh, we're working with vendors. We've got our convention coming next year as a fundraiser. And uh, I, think, I think it's a very obtainable and practical goal. Mm. Good. Yeah, I, I really hope that works out because – uh, there's it, it. This technology needs to be able to do good for people who aren't going to have much more time. You know what I mean? To have any other any fun, they can't get out. They can't do anything else. That that's a a great way to just you, like you were saying, escape. I love it. And the best part about it is, as technology evolves, we can evolve with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep, sounds good. Sounds good. So, um, so so Xavier, what what do you so? All right, so you've started this uh, gaming, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the um, God, I'm sorry, well, I, mean, I, had a, I had an error and I got distracted. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you've, you've started the, uh, the games library, right? Yeah, we, we've started working on it. Um, Brad came to me when he had the idea and asked me to be the VP. I very happily accepted and we've been working on it for about a, has it been almost a year now? Yeah, from conception. Okay, All right. I got it screwed up. I mixed it up. So, Brad, you're this is your the project you started this, and Xavier, you're the VP. That's how. Okay, got it. Right. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. It actually um, came originally from I was from the Midwest. I used to go to Gen Con every year, Origins, Gary Con, uh, Game Hole Con, which we're actually going back to this year in Madison. Oh, and, God uh, damn it! I want to go to that so bad. I know. I know. Uh, I play D and D is the place to be. I DM there in 2014 and loved it. So, uh, we. We really miss that. We don't have that here in the front range. There's one small convention in Denver. And that's really about it. So I want to start a gaming convention because I love running events. I have a background in it, and I'm crazy about games. Found out that conventions are usually run by charities because otherwise you're either a volunteer or an employee when you sit down to take tickets. And if you start looking at the bigger conventions, like the cons run by the classroom. So my wife goes, Greg, you love two things. 
cats and games, and we have a humane society. <laughs> so we came up with the Wyoming Gaming Library, and then as soon as that became a reality, that's actually where my passion's been. That's where my love. This is just a fundraiser. It's awesome, but we really can't wait to use this to bring good to the entire community. Awesome. That's fantastic. That really is. Now, that, how did how did cool. Brad? How did you and Xavier meet? <laughs> Go for so, it. um. Probably the first creepy experience I've had with somebody. We, I was buying D and D miniatures out of the back of his van, oh. in the parking lot of a gaming store. Hey, hey, hey little boy. Hey, hey little boy. Do you want to work this? this? Uh, they were there. Oh, yeah. great, well, my, great. my father was. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was very fun. This was at uh, Extra Life. Mm -hmm. and, oh, go figure. We started with a charity. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Things like that. So we. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize the full circle. Um, then we started and sat down and played uh, TI3, and over that very long game, yeah, do you have it over there? I've oh, got no, you over here. Copy. Yeah. You have my copy of three. I do. Uh, over that very long 10-hour game, we got to know each other pretty well. A little bit. Yeah, and that was it. Just common interests, Dungeons and Dragons, things like that. And honestly, I try to be a good judge of character, not based on age, and he has a passion and a zeal for the gaming industry that I've never seen. And I've been in the gaming industry since 98, so. I appreciate it. Oh, oh very cool. 98. Hey, Pete, that's, that's almost as long as you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, hold on, Mike. And when now, you talk about... When, when you talk about the gaming industry, I've been doing stuff, but it's all been like kind of free stuff. It wasn't up until like the last five years or so that I've been in the industry, if you want to call it that. You know. Uh, but um. Oh, so so, so in other words, are you saying that you would uh, not be able to win a game of pub? Who pubbed that with uh, Brad? Ooh, maybe not. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could win that one. Yeah, I don't know. It depends. Sometimes I'm hot. Sometimes I'm not. That, that one night, the one night I couldn't get anything wrong, and then the other night I couldn't get anything right. So, who knows? Huh. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, all right, so um, let's talk about the charity real quick. Uh, you're going to be providing schools with gaming stuff and GMs. Is that is it right? Oh yeah. Every yeah, GM is going to be background checked, and we're hoping to have after school activities for kids from any school in Wyoming right now. Hope, hopefully, northern and southern Colorado later on. But yep. you would go to the you would with, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say you would go to the schools and, and deliver materials and mm -hmm. possibly deliver uh, or or bring GMs. Well, the goal is to buy a smaller city bus. The buses in Cheyenne are not New York buses; they're little short buses. We right. want to buy one of those. That's the end goal. We're ripping everything out. We're gonna have one side be a board game library along with Dungeons and Dragons, Magic, etc. And the other side is gonna be four rolling racks with all the video games secured. And then we're going to get a generator so we can drop that anywhere in a parking lot, throw up tables, board games, video games, whatever. But we'd be able to go to the school and provide that to any gaming club that wanted to. And that goes for other charities. Uh, we've already had a couple here that want to run things like a Monopoly tournament where they give away a prize. Or if another charity is doing a major event, maybe we'll hire some babysitters that are licensed and provide video games. And then you don't have a childcare excuse not to go to this other charity's fundraiser. Oh, cool. Oh, no, that's really cool. So you take the bus to, like, say, uh, 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 a cerebral palsy event or something like that, and then yeah. people could bring their kids, and their kids could go play in the bus. We have a Ooh, church here God, that damn, gives really away feedback. Oh, we have uh, a church here that gives away 2,000 backpacks every year, and they've already asked us for 2019 to be there. Oh, nice. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. So, just out of curiosity, the, uh, the gaming – world out in, in the west is anyone or the the general population still accepting of that or are there um, yeah, still the some places that are just like oh i don't want that, that devil worshiping mm. stuff in my backyard is that still out there at all there there's a few small cities and very very small cities in wyoming that are against it but for the most part it's a very accepted part of the community we have a population of sixty thousand with six active game stores Huh. Okay. Well, All right, very cool. Re gentlemen, real quick, I don't I'm not sure which one it may be, but it is one do one of you possibly have an outside speaker that's that's playing as well as your headphones or No, we both just have our headphones and microphone. Okay. Because we're getting some some uh, echoing and I don't know if it's just uh in some uh yeah. 
feedback. We'll check our settings while we're here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, All right it's, just, it's just weird. It, anyway, so um, – all right, so that pretty much I mean it pretty much sums up what we're doing and what we're talking about and we we got a game to play here but um but before we do all that uh your first fundraiser is in April. I think you already said that. Um and where where is this going to be? So here in Cheyenne, uh the Red Light Red Lion Hotel and Convention Center. We're going to be their largest event and uh April 20th next year, we're going to do a one-day event on Saturday cuz it's Easter weekend and it's 420. Doesn't <laughs> matter in Wyoming, we're 7 miles away from Colorado. Right. It's okay. <laughs> But uh, after that, we're going to go to two years in 2020 and then three years in 2021, all overnight, you know, 72 hours, nonstop gaming, midnight Twilight Imperium games, things of that nature, uh, looking to bring in a hackathon and musical guests as well. And uh, it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be something that we don't have in the area. Uh, we'll bring people for everywhere. We've had inquiries everywhere, Kansas City, Omaha, Salt Lake, Denver, and more. Oh, fantastic. That's good stuff, man. Fantastic. All right. Well, you, you, you all can find these here fellers at uh, facebook.com forward slash Cheyenne Gaming Convention. So I'm going to spell that for you illiterates. C-H-E-Y-E-N-N-E -N -N -E, Gaming Convention. Uh, the same thing. Uh, you can do that for .com, CheyenneGamingConvention.com. And you can also find them on Facebook uh, forward slash Wyoming Gaming Library. Uh, and that's W Y O M I N G Gaming Library. Uh, that's that's very few people have heard of. That is right. that is that's shy as an S H Y A N N E. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Now you're confusing him, Michael. Uh, only if only if you live in the northern part of the state. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to move on to the game show. I have a really good one for you all this time. That um, means we're in trouble. Yeah, so I'm not trouble. sure whether I'm excited or we, frightened. We are gamers. You do know this, right? Be yes, afraid. yes. Be, be, be very afraid. This is not unlike any game you've ever played. Um, <laughs> here, here we go, everybody. Oh, wrong button. God damn it. It's game time with the Mythwits. I slipped. I hit the button and slipped. All right, it's game time with the Mythwits. I'll be your game master. And this week we are playing Jepar Nerdy. I've taken four of our games and smashed them together into a blatant Jeopardy knockoff. You'll have four categories to choose from and four levels of difficulty in each category. You may pick from any box on the board. If you get the question right, you get the number of points in the box and you get to pick another question. But beware, because if you get it wrong, you'll lose that number of points. And I'll go down the line and give our other contestants a chance to steal. You like that, Mike? I'm going to let people steal. But we can't do the uh, buzzer thing because we don't have buzzers. You're, um, you're, not, you're not allowed. You said no one can steal. Oh, see? There's no, 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 there's no steal. It's not steal. I'm going to go down the line and say, can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? And if they can't, then it's done, okay? Uh, now, you might not. You might say, don't just guess, because if you get it wrong, you lose the points. Uh, everyone will start with 10 points, and Mike will be manning the scoreboard. Good luck, everybody. And now it's time to play Jepar Nerdy. All right, so what I'm going to do, hold on, I'm going to... Uh, i got to hit that thing there. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Ladies and gentlemen, he's about to share his screen. Any minute, hold on. I, I got screwed up because my stupid laptop... He got screwed up because of laptop. Stop, stop. Mike, Mike! Dude. He hates when I do this. You can do it. All right, so then that's good. No, I got to share my screen. Hold on, give me a second. So is this a first person to shoot out thing or? No, no. Oh, no, here we go turn. with this oh, blinky we'll goddamn okay. thing. Yeah, just let it go. Let it go. There it is. There we All go. Right. All right. All right. Yeah. So no, no. This is how it's gonna go because we don't have a. I can't. I don't want to play that game where it's like, oh, I heard this person first, and we don't have a buzzer. So we're just gonna go down the line. I'm gonna start with Xavier, go Brad, then Mike. Uh. All right. Um. So here, here we go. So your four categories are tasty cheesies or D and D species. So what I will do is I will either I will give you a, uh, a the name of something, and you got to tell me is this a D and D species, a race of some kind, or a monster perhaps, or is it a cheese, a type of cheese? Uh, the second category is who dat. Uh, name the fantasy movie title from the description that I give you. Who and it won't be some that's, obscure that's right. fantasy movie. It's going to be something that was big. N new movie. Who this? Right. I haven't <laughs> actually this? watched Lord of the Rings, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm uh, reading the books right 
Soundbite Madness. I will play a movie sound, and you got to tell me what movie it's from. Uh, it'll be like a quote. It'll be somebody saying something. Uh, or Bet the Geek, which is fantasy trivia. So I'll ask you a trivia question about D&D. &D, uh, or no, no, fantasy in general. Sorry. I'll ask you a fantasy in general question, and you tell me the answer. So... Uh, Xavier, you can go first. You can pick any one you want on the board. The number is the number of points that you'll either get or lose. Let's go cheesies or species for three. Cheesies or species for three. All right. Genasi. Oh, that's easily D and D. Air Genasi, Earth Genasi, Fire Genasi. Super easy. <laughs> that is correct. You have to start. No fair. Give Xavier three points. Xavier, you get to go again. Oh. I will take Jesus Species for four. Okay. Jesus Species for four. Barata. Barata? Barata. So is that a nasty sword? Doesn't matter. Uh, no, no. Okay. Doesn't matter. Right. Is, is that a Barata carrying around a hefty two-handed sword, or is that... Uh, or did he cut the Barata with his two-handed sword? I'm going to say that's older D&D. &D. Older D&D. &D. Incorrect. Nope, I'm sorry. Barata, meaning buttery in Italian, is a fresh cheese made from a mix of mozzarella and cream. All right. So that's a minus four. Oh, shit. I should have let somebody steal. Damn it. I fucked it up. Yeah, minus four. All right, well, whatever. 50 50. I would have guessed cheese. So. Right. That's true. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that, Mike. Because it's not yeah, on that one. That's true. Yeah. I didn't think that out. So there's no stealing. All right. So, <laughs> so Brad. If you think that's best. Okay. Brad, uh, what, what do you want? We're going to go who dat for three. Who dat for three. All right. In medieval France, a young pickpocket befriends a knight who has fallen under a strange curse. This pickpocket helps to reunite the knight and his love and defeat the curse. Wow. I genuinely have no idea. Read it, read it one more time. Oh, I'll, read it, I'll read it again. In medieval France, a young pickpocket befriends a knight who has fallen under a strange curse. The pickpocket helps to reunite the knight and his love, and defeat the curse. Black Knight. Incorrect. Ah. That was Lady Hawk. Oh. Oh. So Brad gets minus three, Mike. Yeah, I'm on it. And Mike, you're up. Whoops. Minus three. All right, I will take a sound bite for four. Ooh. Sound bite for four. No All steals, right. huh? All right. All right, Mike, here you go. You lied. Yes, yes, I lied. I'm a, I'm a right, sir. I give the truth. Go. Hey. Go all one right. more time. One more time. Okay. All right. You lied. Yes, yes, I lied. I'm a, I'm a right, sir. I give the truth. Go. You get to go first. Mm. We're not doing steals. Sorry. No steals. Yeah, the the cheesy a species kind of ruined that. I should have thought about That's that. Crap. Oh, dun, 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 I am not getting it. I'm not getting it either. Dun, 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 you want to guess at all? Uh, uh, you guess you lose points. Uh, no, no, oh, he's, oh, he's going to lose points anyway. I'm going to lose points. Uh, uh, really. uh, that would be um, Predator. <laughs> Incorrect. No. Damn it. <laughs> no. Go ahead, guys. Tell him. A Knight's Tale. That's correct. Oh, That's correct. I, yeah. Not one of my favorite movies. All right, uh, Xavier, you're up. Uh, so I'm in the lead right now, I believe. Uh, I'll go. Yes, you are in the lead. Yes. I'll go safely Soundbite Madness for one. Soundbite Madness for one. All right, ready? Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. The wrong button. Ignore that. Sorry. <laughs> you find yourself okay. alone. Riding in green fields with the sun on your face. Do not be troubled, or you are in Elysium, and you're already dead! I know I've seen it. 
Play it one more time. Gonna be, my father's going to be mad that I don't know it. Play I'll it play it again. I'll play Thursday. it one more time. I'll... You find yourself alone, riding in green fields with the sun on your face. Do not be troubled. Oh, you are in Elysium, and you're already dead! I honestly don't know. I can't. I, I remember the scene, but I can't remember the name of the movie. You know what actor it is? No. Uh, Alright, Mike, go ahead. Uh, you know what it is. It was Gladiator, isn't it? Yeah, Gladiator. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, correct, correct. Russell Crowe. Yes. Alright, Brad, you're up. Mike, that was minus one for Xavier. Yes, yes, sir. Sorry. I'm going to roll Bet the Geek for four. Bet the Geek Ooh. for four. All right, here we go. First Bet the Geek. All right. In Michael Moorcock's universe, who is the Knight of Swords and the patron of Malnebene? <laughs> he said Moorcock. <laughs> Moorcock. <laughs> Moorcock. Can we read I it again? the physical challenge? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. Oh, man. All right. That is Ariok. Mm. You could be lying. I wouldn't know. That was, <laughs> uh, that was a four-pointer. It it's a tough one. All uh, right. Uh, uh, that's minus four for Brad, Mike. Uh -huh. All right. At this point, it's who's the least negative. Yeah. No. Uh, well, all right. Uh, F, well, it's where... Well, I'll give you the score after I go, because that'll be the end okay. of the second round. All right, Mike, yes. what you want? I will take... Uh, I'm going to take Bet the Geek for three. Bet the Geek for go. three. All right. In what 1988 movie has the, char has the characters Mad Morrigan, Sorsha, and Elena... Or, oh, I'm sorry, or Laura, Laura Dannon? Oh, God. God, give me those names again. It, what, yeah, in 1988, right? Yeah, 1988. So go back to 1988 in your mind. You're in the theaters. Right, right. right this right. is 11 years before I was born. Right, okay. right. Mad Morrigan, Sorsha, and Alora Dannon. I'm Mad Morrigan. I, Mad yeah. Morgan is, you, yeah. You've seen this. You know You know this movie. Of course you're going to shit yourself when, when I tell you and you're like, oh, I'm damn already, it. I'm already shit. I'm, I'm covered in feces right now, but hold on. Uh So uh, um, oh, God. I don't know the movie, but Mad Morgan sounds like he should be teaching defense against the dark arts. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Not, not a, all right. So you said Knight's Tale, but what is the one with, uh, uh, oh, God, what is his name? The guy. Oh. Huh? Huh? Dude. The guy, the thing. Yeah. Oh. God, yeah, you know what? I I'm never gonna get it. I'm not gonna get it. All right, Mike. Take my minus three. Incorrect. <laughs> that was Willow. <laughs> That's the fucking movie I was trying to do. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, all right, all right, minus three. Like, who was in that? Who was in that? That was Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Okay. And the little guy from um, guy. the guy from uh. Willow, the guy from Willow. Willow, yeah, it was Willow, but he was he was he was one of the Ewoks, one of the original Ewoks. He's yeah. been in every Star Wars movie since Jedi. <laughs> all right, uh, we're back. Oh, get the score, Mike. Uh, all right, the score right now is Xavier with a safe eight. Brad and Mike are tied for three. Nice. Hey, Still we'll anybody's game. Still so anybody's game, if you're Xavier. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> so, Xavier, you're up. Who dat for four? Do it. Who dat? No, he, no, that was me. That was Brad. I was, I was, I was daring him. I'll oh, do who dat, I'll do who dat for two. Uh, who dat okay. for two? Okay. Who dat for two? Very good. All right. Uh, who dat? Okay. Uh, when, oh boy, you're not going to get this. This is not a good one for you. Uh, when the princess is scheduled to be the next sacrificial virgin to a dragon, it is up to an aged wizard and his young apprentice to defeat the serpent and save the princess. Oh, I, these are hard. I love it. I, I should have told you how old I was. So you could pick stuff that I might I, I, possibly know. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is not a good uh, one for you. The, I'm... No, it's no, it's all good. Um, 
I, I just don't know. know. All right. Incorrect. It was. Was that Dragon's Tail? Dragon's Le- Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer. I, I, Remember the I guy knew. had the spear and the, the stone thing and the, yeah, he stabbed it and it blew mm-hmm. up. And, have you ever seen it, uh, Xavier? I have. Xavier? I have not. Oh, if you're a D&D fan, Dragon Slayer is – you should yeah. see it. You should totally it's, see it's, it. Well, it's kind of like cool. – it's Conan for dragon, for the uh, Dragon's Age. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. That's minus two. two. Minus two. Gotcha. All right. And Brad, you're up. You Soundbite badness for three, please. All right, uh, sound like madness for three. I laid low your warriors of old. I instilled terror in the hearts of men. I am king under the mountain. Huh. God okay. damn. That's a dragon. It's either Dragonheart or yes, Dragon. I'll, I'll go with Dragonheart. Dragon. Oh my God, man! I made this too hard. I made this too hard. No, it's it's a uh, the Hobbit Desolation. I was, of I was thinking it was the Hobbit and Slog, but I thought that'd be too easy. I was no. waiting for I am fire, I am death. Right. That's uh, that's the dude who does uh, Optimus Prime's voice. That's all I could think about. But Peter Cullen. Yeah. <laughs> No, that I just that I thought the king reaction. under the mountain would give it away when he said king That's under the mountain. That's what I thought, and it was right. my gut reaction. I'm like, no, you wouldn't make it that easy. <laughs> I, I did. That's minus one three, Mike. To All, right. All right, Mike, like you were up. Uh, All right, uh, I, I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have to. Well, I can't go with Huda for four, so I will go with. Uh, hmm. You can go. You can go negative. Let's go. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Cheesies or species for two. Cheesies or species for two. All right. Mazdam. Mazdam. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, species. Oh man. Incorrect. <laughs> Mazdam is a traditional semi-hard Dutch cheese made from cow's milk. And it's very good. I've had it. It's delicious. Oh. Uh... Xavier, you steer me wrong. I looked at your face and I'm like, oh, he's not going to know a goddamn cheese. Ah, he's right. going to know. I had that thought too. Nice. Go ah, on, Xavier. I actually almost went to culinary school. So. Damn boozle for a goddamn oh. cheese. All right, Mike. That's minus two to you, brother. Good All right, God. Xavier, you're up. Cheesies are species for one. I'll play it safe. All right. It's a 50 50. All right. You, yeah. you, there's no way you don't have this one. Get Yankee. Yeah, well, D and D. Yeah, of course, of course that is. Terrifying. All right, so Gith Yankee are an race? ancient race descended yeah, from sorry. humans. They dwell upon the astral plane, but will often leave that plane to make war on the other races. Right, on the so cover of the Fiend Folio. And recently added in Mordecai or Mordecai's Tome of Foes, I believe. Correct. Okay. And sorry. And Xavier, you're up again. Oh, uh, I will bet the geek for one. <laughs> Bet the gate for one. Wow, yeah, play it safe. I mean, you know. What, what is the left. name of, of the elven outpost where Elrond lived with his family? No, I played through the game. I know this. Oh, my goodness. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I'm reading the book. <laughs> no, I played the game, though. I played the game. <laughs> oh, for I When you tell me, I'm going to hate, hate it because I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. All right, it's Rivendell. Yeah. Aww. So, Mike, that's a negative one. And Brad, you have the board. Uh, I want to win, so I'm going to try for Hudat four. Well, how's, okay. how's Brad has zero? How's he? How's he getting points there? Uh... He said you can go negative. Oh, he can go he negative. Can. I said oh, okay. that. Otherwise, I couldn't pick anything. Right. <clears throat> All right, Brad. Oh shit. The hero, sure. the hero is hired by a queen to escort a teen princess and her giant bodyguard to retrieve the magic horn of Dagon. Unknown to him, the queen plans to sacrifice the princess when she returns to inherit her kingdom. Can you use it in the form of a sentence? (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) Good God. The princess's name is blank. No, I don't even know the princess's name. The hero's name is blank. The hero's name is blank, yeah. 
you go. Now, <laughs> the, there are some clues I threw in here to make it a tiny, a tiny bit mm -hmm. easier. Like Horn of Dagon, giant the, bodyguard. Right, giant bodyguard. Go... Horn of Dagon. No, no. Due deduction no. here, Dagon was. No. 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 I'm going to just hunt for left field and be wrong and say the Princess Bride. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. I am not. Correct. No, it was Conan the Destroyer. Ah. Uh, they had too many boobs. My dad wouldn't let me watch them. Really? Um, yeah, he, he cuts the horn off and the princess, is, Wilt Chamberlain is the princess's bodyguard. I know it was a hard one. It was a hard one. Well, how no, many points was that off? A negative, negative four, four, Mike. All right. It's like golf, right? Yeah. 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 Have a hell of a game you're having. Sure, sure. You're doing great. Uh, Brad, you're up. Oh, no, that was Brad. Sorry. Mike, you're up. That's me. All right. Well, hey, I mean, if I can go negative, shit, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna uh, movie sound, movie sound bite for uh, Sound bite, man? Oh, yeah. here you go. Here you go, Mike. The enemy of number is a poultry three to one. Good odds for any Greek. That one was shorter than the others. That was easier. It's so easy. Uh, one hundred? No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Not that one. What is it? <laughs> is that the? Is that the one that's one hundred? Or what is it? The? Uh... Yeah, it's the. How come I don't get the ones that I know? <laughs> is that that's the uh, trivia? Trivia Troy? games always work. Troy. What's your answer? One hundred. You sure? No, not really. When the DMS, are you sure? You say no. <laughs> I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you one tiny hint. You're warm. You're really, really warm. Yeah, I know I am. I know I am. You're pretty. Actually, you're pretty hot. You're I just know. not I, red I, hot. I didn't see the movie. It's the one with the. They all defended that thing where the, it was only a hundred of them or so, and it's. But uh, one hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. There you go. Oh. Yay, Mike! Thank you. I was like, you're about 33 percent of the way there. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> kept saying 100. I kept, I'm like, oh god. All right, Mike. That would be, <laughs> yeah. that would be a classic, Mike, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie, 100, Mike. You. <laughs> to... It's Mike. that movie, 53. <laughs> I'm like, you're in the universe, you know, 41. 41. It's 40. Oh, yeah, right. All right, Mike. What's it going to be? Oh, wow. Bet uh, the Geek who, or Who Dat? Let's do a Who Dat because no one's gotten any of those. So, yeah, hey. All right. Only two uh, questions have been answered right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice job, Mike. Three. Three, three. 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 Yeah. yeah. I just right. answered one. Who Dat? Barely. A fairy tale adventure about a beautiful young woman to be married to an evil prince and her true love, a stable boy who is kidnapped by pirates. Mowage. <laughs> Mowage <laughs> is what brings us together today. I'm gonna, you gotta, you I'm gotta gonna go behind it. the field goal and pick Brad's punt up and go run it in for a touchdown. All right, yeah, I know you know what it is. All right, you got it. All right, it's one point for you. Oh, Fun right. note about that movie: I recently. Just last week, got my girlfriend to watch it for the first time. <sighs> bravo, bravo, bravo. Hey, hey, that's okay. Listen, my girlfriend was 46, and I got her to watch it for the first, first time. So, Oof. yeah, I know. So, it, it, you shouldn't feel that bad. <laughs> Mine should. Yeah, I'm looking right at you. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess I'll go with Bet the Geek for two, for not the win. <laughs> Second place is first loser. That's right. All right. Exactly. <laughs> nice. All right, so bet the geek. Uh, Mike, Peter Baelish is known by what nickname? Ah, uh, Littlefinger. All right, you get two points, Mike. Woohoo! No idea. I had no idea on that one. That's Game oh. of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. All right, yeah, bro. So Bro, do you even Game of Thrones, bro? I don't right. Game of Thrones. All it's right, on my list, so though. Here oh. we go. I can do that now. Sweet. All right, and I can stop sharing. All right, all right uh, before I stop sharing, uh, so the score, the final score, Mike, read it out for me. Uh, it would be our uh, best loser would be Brad. Yeah. Brad with negative four. He, he go wins big or go home. That's right. And you are home and have gone big. 
And uh, me with a, uh, you know, modest six points. I had a slight comeback at the end. And Xavier, our biggest wiener, with eight points. Congratulations, yes. Xavier. Thank you, thank you. You're our winner on Jepar Nerdy. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for playing. Uh, <laughs> so it's funny because, like, I haven't been able to see the chat room because I was going to do this on my laptop, and it's like it was buried behind it. There's like, there's comments like crazy on here. Yeah. Everyone loves playing the game along with us. Yes, they do. It's hard fun. for me because I am not going to cheat. I'm, I'm, I was like literally trying not to look up there. I'll go back right. and look at all the comments about, I can't believe this guy. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> they do that all the time, too. All right, you guys. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna throw the links out one more time. Make sure everybody, you go check out uh, the Facebook page, Cheyenne Gaming Convention, CheyenneGamingConvention.com, and Facebook.com, Wyoming Gaming Library. Uh, these guys are doing some really excellent, cool stuff, um, and and uh, they're gonna be bringing relief to uh, to people in hospitals, which they all need. You know who could have used that, Mike? Scott Pond would have loved that. Yeah. Could yeah, come in, brought him could, some games to play. He, he could still use it, man. Drive it up there. He's, he's recovered, he, but he had some successful uh, cancer uh, removal, and, uh, but he's recovering at home. He has a, the report today. He, he read, I read that he's got tons and tons of staples and stitches all over. He had <laughs> some, um, you know, they, they cut him open almost stem to stern. So Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, they keel hauled him, man. Yeah. <laughs> But he, but he's doing well. No, he's recovering yes. great. I mean, yes. I, I saw the he's, he had a post a picture on Facebook and he was looking fly, looking good, looking there like healthy. Go. So, yay, Scotty, good deal, man. Team Pondy, that's what I say. Uh, Scott's one of our good friends. He's been on the show uh, before, and and we see him at conventions all the time. He's just he's a good guy, hell of a good guy, and we're we're happy Excellent. he's a uh, hell of an artist. Well. If you need good arts deal. and arts and graphics, uh, book covers, anything done, Pondy is your man. Yeah, that's know. true. Know. That's true. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's do this thing. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Myth Wits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Myth Fits, like all the clowns that were in the room tonight. Really good job. Thanks, guys, for coming and, and watching the show and commenting. Uh, if you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episode on Facebook or on YouTube. Find us at Facebook and Twitter as MythWits. And check out MythWits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread MythWits love over the entire planet. MythWits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. MythWits, <laughs> MythWits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And, you know, don't watch it with your virtual stuff on because it's, I mean, it, you got to watch the live thing. Make but, sure to check share, out. Share the video. Share this video on your Facebook feed because yeah. why not? Why not? Why not? Don't your friends clutter up your Facebook feed with Yeah, crap. I know. All kinds of it's garbage. For charity this time. For charity, yeah. Yes. Right. Spew us all over your friend's Facebook feed. Right. Treat us like a politic. You know, like one of those politics that people put all over everybody's yeah. all in your right. face all the time. Yeah, you could do that. Right. We're fine. We're good with that. We're, we're Make sure... That. Make sure to check out aetherforge.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. And one last thing before I turn it over to Mike for a second. Um, these guys answered a, a, a call I put out for guests, and I'm really glad they did because it was a great episode. Thanks, guys, for, for answering the call. Thank you. It was awesome. Um, yeah, man, it was, it was really good. And uh, um, So anyway, thanks a lot. All right, Mike. Uh, to, oh, sorry, tell, tell everybody. Ah, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. Until next week, Mike. Hey Pete, I'm doing a I'm doing a real far reach back. You ready? You ready? Okay. These hands. Oh shit! So big. I He's doing it. Them. He's doing the thing. It's really happening. These hands.